Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi Yisai. We're back again on Torah Any... <coughs> Excuse me. TorahAnyTime.com We are on the Pasha now, the Sovim Vayelech, a double Pasha. And um, there are many double Pashas in the Torah. In fact, there are seven of them. And um, when are they split apart? Well, let me tell you about the Sovim Vayelech. That's split apart every three or four years. The Sovim I said last week, or this week, I think on Kol Halashon, a mistake. Maybe I said it on, well, probably on, <coughs> on Kol Halashon. Um, because uh, Torah at a time, we're only on once a week. It's on um, Kol Halashon every single day. I made a mistake. I said the Nitzvah Vayelech is separate <coughs> four times in a hundred years. Not true. Every four years. There is something else that's only four times in a hundred years. That is when all the parishes are separate, split apart, and all the seven parishes split apart. And um, that is when the Yom Tovim come on the weekend, because you can't read the parish of the week, and you have a leap year. You have four extra weeks in a leap year, meaning you have 13 months. And, and the parish and the Yom Tovim come on the weekend, like Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, Pesach. Then you have no weekly parsha to read because it's yontif. So then you have to double up the parsha all together. The all together, I think it's four times in hundred years. And when they're all split apart, that is when you don't have um, a leap year and none of the Yom Tov are on the weekend. That's very seldom. But it's some my <coughs> Sorry, it's split apart every four years, three four years. I so now let's talk about <coughs> my, 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 I might have something in my throat. Um Sam Bayev. Atem that Savim you read separate or together, always before Rosh Hashanah. Um if it's the Tsav together, it's before Rosh Hashanah. And no, it's like this. If Rosh Hashanah comes out on base and gimbal, the first days on Monday or the first days on Tuesday. Then the Tzavim Yelich was separate. This year it's on a Thursday. Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday. We have a triple um, three days of Yontif and outside of Eretz Yisrael. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos. And then the first days of Sukkot is Thursday, Friday, Shabbos. And the last days of Sukkot is Thursday, Friday, Shabbos. That means you have to make three Erev Tav Shilin. Not in Eretz Yisrael. They can cook on Friday because it's not Yontif on the second day of Sukkot. And the second day of Sukkot at the end, it's not Yontif, so they can cook. We have to make uh, three Erev Tavshilons, they only have to make one Erev Tavshilon, because Rosh Hashanah, they keep two days. Since Ezra, since the second base of English, they keep two days Rosh Hashanah. So they have to make one Erev Tavshilon, we have to make three. So if you go to Eretz Yisrael, like I'm going, before Yom Kippur, and stay through Sukkot, you want anyone to visit you on the second day Yontif, which is not Yontif for them, because it's Cholomoy, Friday, the first Friday, and um, so they, uh, and the second Friday, it's not uh, Yontiv, so they can come to you, take a picture of you on your Yontiv, and you have to dive in the second yeah, Yontiv, how uncomfortable that feels in areas as well, especially at the end of Yontiv, when you're keeping Simchas Torah, they're already taking down the sukkah and talking on the cell phone and driving their cars, you feel so uncomfortable, so funny. But that's the way it is, big machlok is if in Eretz Yisrael, if you go there, just for Yontem, you have to keep only one day, there's such a Shittim. And, 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 and the Huskim have gotten involved in this already for 300 years. They seem to be a very, very strong opposition for a Chutznik, like us, to keep only one day while you're in Eretz Yisrael. Unless you go there three times a year, and you own property there. But if you don't go three times a year, and you don't own property there, you're not a Ben Eretz Yisrael. You got to keep two days. That's the final Basak of the Ramah and the Shulchan Aruch for us Chutzniks. You want to look look for Heterim. I'm not in the business of Heterim. I don't want to do Chumras either. It's exactly what that Lachus says. That's what we keep. And if you break a mini Yisrael, it's very very bad. You know, if an Ashkenazi eats kidneyos, he's high misa. He eats shemayim because not because of the kidneyos. Kidneyos is not chametz. Because he's poets get it. He broke, broke a minhag that's 700 years old. Says the Mepharshim of the Shulchan Aruch. And he broke an old minig Yisrael for Ashkenazim. He's Mechayim Yisrael B'day Shemayim. 
He's a poet together. He's a he's a renegade against accepted halacha. Very hate even on the bottom there. The shulchan aruch and the mishnah burim. The hate says chay misa b'nei shemayim because he's got poet together, not because of the kidney. He's a um, renegade. Anyhow, let us now talk about this Aaron of Rosh Hashanah coming up next week. We have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And uh, Tuesday night is Yontif. Wednesday, Thursday. No, uh, Wednesday night is Yontif. That means Thursday, Friday, Shabbos. So we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Four days we say Slichas. And we don't start till this Mosi Shabbat. Some do it at night, some do it early in the morning, five o'clock. <coughs> like the Shulchan Art says, which is written by Sfadi, by the way. <coughs> We get up five o'clock and we finish by six, and uh, then we da start davening. But to get should I get up by shmoda sabok and not one o'clock in the morning? That's easy because you've been up already. But getting up at four thirty and going to minyan at four thirty or five or five thirty, that's difficult. And you should be finished at shmoda uh, and uh, at alosa shaka, which is who knows an hour before sunrise. That's difficult. So that's what we do. We go to sleep every morning early, including the first one. Because that's a minute of Ashkenaz, a minute of everybody, until people got lazy about 50 years ago. Even the biggest yeshivas go in the morning, uh, the first night at night, but the morning not too early, maybe 7 o'clock they roll in. It's supposed to be finished by 5.30 or 6 already. Anyhow, if you want to do it the old way, the right way, not Chumras, the old way, like it says in Ramo, you better do it Ashmoda Sabokim. So that's the sleep of starting next week. We only have four days. The Sfardim... Uh, they have a whole month of Elul. Like I told you, a Sfari once told me he loves to be a Sfari in Nisan when he can eat kidneys, and in Av when he can swim in the nine days, but not in Elul because 30 days of Slichot is a little too much. I said, well, it's <laughs> cool, Shanim Rabot. should live a long life and keep on doing that, but our minute is um, to get up only four days. Well, if it's not four day, three days before Rosh Hashanah, you have to get up a week before. But we have to have... Um, we get up four days before this week here. And we have our difficulties too. We can't swim in the nine days. And we can't eat meat in the nine days. They can't. Only Shlua, Shechalbo, they don't. And we can't eat kidneys. So uh, they should stay with theirs and we'll stay with ours because we have a difficulty too. Anyhow, let's start in Nitzavim. Let's see what it says in Nitzavim. Atem Nitzavim Hayom. You always read this before Rosh Hashanah. Because Aten and Sovim Hayom of Nei Hashem Lekechem, Aten and Sovim Hayom Kulchem, all of you, of Nei Hashem Lekechem before God your God, which means we always read this before Rosh Hashanah because it fits in. You're standing today before God before the Day of Judgment, and if it doesn't come out before Rosh Hashanah, the calendar is wrong. It got to come out. The parsha got to come out according to the calendar, not the other way around. You're standing before God your God, all of you today. Of course, the parsha it means something else. That, that was what I told you is the drasha. But uh, you're standing before God, you got Roshechem, Shiftechem, because Moshe was said this on the last day of his life, the Zayin Ador, in the year 2488. So let me turn this off. We don't, can't have this right at the moment. This is not what we need to interrupt ourselves. Let's turn that off right here, or make it, put it on low. Yeah, vibrate only. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, listen. Um, so you're standing today before God your God because after the Shabbos is Rosh Hashanah. You know what it comes out? That this year we don't lame Azino. And so Sabrocha. This year we don't lame it. Because Rosh Hashanah is over and New Year's starting. So this year we didn't lame Hazino. And so Sabrocha. This year we don't lame Hazino, so Sabrocha. Last year neither. We never lay Hazino Zosabrocha in the year that you're in. You always lay it at the beginning of the next year. Hazino Zosabrocha Barashas. So the last two centers here come at the beginning of next year. Every year is like that. So you can go to your friend and say, well, I have to tell you bad news that this year we're not going to lay Hazino. It's, the rabbis told me that <laughs> this year we're not laying Hazino. We ran out of time. Because when Shoshana comes, the year's over. You didn't lay Hazino and Zosabrocha. In fact, last year neither. <laughs> no year we laid Hazino Zosabrocha. Not in the last 2,000 years, because it always comes at the beginning of the next year. Anyhow, so, Atem that saw Hayom, you're standing today. Why doesn't it say Atem owned him? 
So because it says Nitzavim and not the normal word, we have a right to have a drusha. Says the Gaon, Rav Shem Shmuel Hirsch, you're like a matzeva, a monument, indestructible mountain, matzeva, like a mountain, like a boulder. You are permanent, even though you heard last week's parasha, Kisavu, the 98 curses, and before that, the 11 curses, the 11 arurim, and the 98 curses, and you're still here, and you'll be here forever. You are a permanent fixture, like a matzeva, like a monument, like a boulder. That's why it doesn't say ondim, even though you heard all the klolos. It's not going to wipe out all the klolos, so ever, because the 98 curses, the tochecho is written in singular, you, 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 never the you, plural, never. Because when they were, 60 years ago, when they were wiping out the Jews in Europe, America was growing, Yiddish was growing, starting to grow. It's never collective, it's always one section, not the whole, and not the whole world. You are permanent structure, like the stars, the, you are untouchable and indestructible, like the sand, indestruct, indestructible, like the offer, like the dust of the earth, you can't destroy it. We are indispensable for the existence of the planet. That's why God made the world for us, because the, the letters of Boratius, the letters, the, uh, the Russian tables, Beis, Resh, Al, Shin, Yud, Tov, means Barishono, Ra, Elohim, Shiyakablu, Yisrael, Torah. First word, that's why I made the world. Otherwise, what's the point of the world? Of having people who don't recognize the Creator never thank Him. Just take and take and take and take and never give back. What do you need the world for? So it's the whole purpose is maybe somebody will discover Hashem and start to make a movement back to the Creator. That was Abba Mavina. That's why he says in the beginning of Rachel's when he tells the whole story over again, you know, a few uh, chapters into the first portion, Eder told the Shema'i Bars, Behi Barom, and God recreated them. Behi Barom, the same letters as Avraham. The purpose of creation, that there's, this man came up later, his name was Avraham. He started a religion of worshipping and devoting your life to the invisible force that controls all forces. Shem Tzavokos, the God of all powers of nature. Tzavokos, all the na natural forces. He's the head of that. If you don't recognize that, you have never arrived. You never got out of kindergarten. Eil Atem Nitzavim, you are permanent, monument, standing. Kulchem, all of you. Lepnei Hashem Alekechem, Roshechem, your leaders. Shivtechem of your tribes. Liknechem, your elders. Shodrechem, your officers who enforce the law. Kol Ish Yisrael, every Jewish man. Kapachem, little babies. And Neshechem, your wives. Megerecho, and the convert. Asher Bekerev, Machanecho, that's in the middle of your camp, means the real Ger Tzedek, the real Ger. Mechot Tivei Secho, from the woodcutters, that show you to the water or drawers. Both blue-collar workers, what is that? I mean, it's not going from one end to the other. The answer is yes. Mechot Tivei Secho, this is the lowest, Erev Shoy, the mecha goes to draw the water. That's how Tamil Chacham left teach you Torah, water and Torah is prepared. From you going from one end to the other end, everybody is now obligated to keep the Torah. There's no favoritism, not for Moshe Rabbeinu and not for your Dosen and Aviram. Everybody got to keep the same. There's no favoritism. The other cover is to make you come over to the covenant. Hashem and the Kechabal also and his dread curse if you don't keep it. You don't have free choice to do it if you feel to do the Torah. You can't have your agenda as opposed to the Torah agenda. You don't have free choice. You either keep the Torah or you're punished. Hashem al-Kechot Kodesim Chohayom, the God of creating, that are cutting with you today, every day. Why do you have to keep this Torah? But God said, remember, He's the creator of the world. What He told you is the right thing. Ah, you hate to have a Yetzir Hara that wants to do opposite. God created that negative force. Yes, overcome it with your mind. That's why Talmud Torah is the biggest thing. Learning Torah, intellectual knowledge is the greatest wisdom of all because that lets you live mind over matter. That's the difference between an animal and a human. A human being has mind that can control the matter. The animal doesn't have that. He lives by instinct. Therefore, if you live by instinct and do what you feel, you've got to bring an animal as a karma. But if you did it intentionally, you know it's wrong, you did it anyhow, you bring no karma. Because animals never do anything against God's wishes knowingly. They live by instinct. But if you did it by maize, there's no carbonus. You can do shuma, but no carbonus, because the carbon is an animal that lives by instinct, and you lived like him. You were forgetful. You didn't think. You, you just felt. You just did it without thinking, without learning. No, you live like a behemoth. So you bring a behemoth. That's your kapara. In order to 
establish you, Osecha you, Hayom today, Lo Lom to him for a God. Who you call him, he'll be for you a God. Kashi Dibrlach, like he said he would be. Kashi Nishbar Abasech, a lot he swore to your forefathers, Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. Why do you have to tell me that all the time, your forefathers is Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov? Over and over and over and over and over in the Torah. Never to think. You know why? Ain't all the other Shloshes, there's only three of them. Not the twelve Shabbat and where you came from. They're not the others. No one can equal Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. Not even Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe was the greatest Navi, there's no question. Av shall call out of him. But he didn't have the Amunah of Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov. Of Abram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, God told them something. This is your land. And then he had to be ripped off for $40,000 for a martyr's of my He had no complaints. This is your land. He had to buy your land to, to, uh, to bury Sodom. Then he told Abram, this is your land, but he had to, be, he had to leave the country. It was hunger. He didn't have any complaints. <clears throat> God said, I'll make uh, you into a great nation, Yaakov. And he had to run away and live with his crooked uncle, father-in-law. He had no complaints. Moshe, when he came to Moshe Rabbeinu, Hasinai, he said, but who said they're going to believe me? Came lo yamin be, they won't believe me. He says, you talk Lashon Hara against Tal Yisrael. Put your hand in your bosom, take it out, it was Saraz. You get Saraz for Lashon Hara. You don't trust me. Chaval al the Abdim al Woe for those who are gone and never forgotten, because they don't ever stout me. No one can beat the others in Amunah. No one could beat Moshe Rabbeinu in, in the Vua. Okay? Do different things. Because the others, when they heard God's voice, they collapsed on the ground. Moshe stood standing. Pale, pale, Dabrabo. Upright, and not unconscious. It wasn't a dream or like that in a state of dream. It was totally conscious. No one could be on that level except Moshe Rabbeinu. He says, But here, and if you tell your daughter, you know, he says, She is Shabna Beres Mitzrayim, how we lived in Egypt. As I say, your varna and what we pass, be careful for goyim the last forty years through these goyim. I say, avartem that you pass by all the goyim. Amalek attack you the second week, and you pass by the different goyim that live around there. But here, as she could say, you saw their disgusting ways, their filthy, immoral, perverted religions. She could say, as gilulam, their filthy, immoral practices. Eights for even the kesef is up. Eights, they worship wood. They take a wood, and they make carve it out, and they worship it. They make a statue out of an idol. And then they take a stone and chisel it out and they worship it as a statue. The Kes of Zorvin, golden idols. Shea Imorim, that's with these idols. The gold is over the idols. This is the hint to the three religions that we live, we live through, that have lived, been with us the last 2,000 years. Eights is wood. The Tselem. The nuts from the Christians. The wood, you know. I don't have to tell you what that means. Evan is the Muslim, Kaaba stone, the Kaaba stone, where that guy went up to heaven, they say, towards Shekhar. And Kesev is all gold and silver, that's the religion of Western decadence nowadays. It's called the God of gold and silver. Hedonism, money is everything. Even the, uh, the arch enemies, uh, Japan, 50, 60 years ago, they believed in Hirohito and in nationalism. Uh -uh, it's all money today. All the cars are made there. Parts of every car, every camera, everything that's made there. It's money, not religion anymore. It's uh, everything is money, 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 money. There's only one religion still ma uh, um, insane, nationalistic about their God. That's the one that's giving the biggest threat to the world today and to Eretz Yisrael. They still have that old concept of one God only, they'll die for it. And um, you're not allowed to be melamed chusums on 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 uh, on rishoyim, but they have this one idea that is our idea to be mostly lavish for an idea, and their women are covered up, even though they may mistreat them privately. Uh, but um, it seems to be maybe they're teaching the world something. Sneers and ready to die for a uh, for for a, for a holy idea. Yeah. Why is there so much dishonesty with money today? Everybody is so careful. There's so many crooks out there. You can't trust your neighbor. You can't uh, right. lend anyone money. That's what it says here. Don't bow down to the idols of the Goyim. Eitz for Evan the Kesev is all. Eitz is Nutsris, Nutsrim. As Evan is Yishmael. And, and Kesev is all. Is uh, Edom today. Um, everything is money. These are the three idols. The golden idols, the stone idols, and the wood idols. 
And anyhow, maybe there's a man or woman today when Moshe is speaking to them. His family, Oshegan or his tribe, Asher Lavav upon Hayom, his heart is turning away. He has a doubt in Yahadus. The Ema Shemelakechem, the Lechas to go Lavo to serve as the Gatei Goyim, the Aga idols, the gods of the Goyim, Pahem them, Pan Yesh Bechem Shoresh. Maybe there's a root growing in somebody's mind, a Sophic, Pore that will produce fruits. Rosh Lano, wormwood and very poisonous, the weeds. Pahem Shemelakechem, the Lechas to go Lavo to serve as the Gatei Goyim, the Aga idols, the the dread curse of the last week's Sendra, he's for Eich Bilbovo, he'll bless himself in his heart, not going to do tshuva, he says, I'm okay, lay more shalom ye li, I'll be alright, I don't have to do tshuva, I'll be okay, so there'll be peace to me, I'll walk in the dictates of my own heart, I know what is right, you don't have to tell me, I'm a decent person, the man suppose, or Rova is at Sumeya, in order to add, suppose, like most Sith add, Arava, the well drunk, the water, as had Sameya, the thirsty. <sighs> the four hardest words in Torah to, 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 uh, to explain. The four hardest words in all of Chumash to explain. The man supposed Arava had Sameya to add along the well watered with the thirsty. What does that mean? Rashi says like this the Rava, the well, the well watered, that's a Russia. He's drunk. He's well watered. He's drunk with pride and self confidence. He's a good person. You don't have to tell him what to do. He has a mind. He knows what's right. Tameya is those who thirst for the Dvar Hashem. They're learning Torah all their life. 15, 16, 18 hours a day. They're thirsty to know more and more and more and more. He says, Laman, he says, I'll be alright. You don't have to tell me. I have my own agenda. I know what's right and wrong. Laman says, I'm not going to do tshuva. He says, Sparei, Bill Bobo. He'll bless himself in his heart. I'm a good yid. Uh, I don't have to, the, the drunk with pride says, I don't have to hang around with the Tzameya, the, the fanatics or black hats who are learning Torah all day long and splitting hairs 70 different ways, an explanation of every word and learn all the martyrs and Midrashim and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the, the Shita Mekabetzas and, 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 and Gilgan Hashas and, uh, and the Kerek and the, and the Katsos and the Tiva Egers and all that. I don't have to waste my time on silly theoretical nonsense. Look at the Ramba, look at the Shulchan Aruch, that's it. I don't have to learn Torah, Bashita. Hashem, Hashem said, Lo Yom Hashem Sloch, no God will never forgive him. Forgive that such a man. Yiddish guy built on no Talmud Torah is the worst thing in the world. Lo Yom Hashem Sloch, no God will never forgive him. Ki oz yesh shan af Hashem, ve ken oz so be isha hu. God will be very furious against that man. Rob Tzbo, and will jump upon him. Mokhala Ola, Aksu, Vesei Vazer, all the curses he just heard. Mokh Hashem, Hashem, God will erase his name, Betachat Hashemayim, from under the heaven. The God will separate them out only for evil. The whole ship to Israel from all the tribes of Israel, Gechol Ha'olos, like all these curses, Habris of the covenant, Haksuba that's written the Sefer Torah said, Why is it so bad to be a from Jew, keep all the mitzvahs, but don't learn Torah? Why is it so bad just to be a very from Jew, pay your taxes honest, never do anything immoral, never do any averos, and you do all the mitzvahs, but you don't learn a shir every single day by Shita? Because I'm a from Yid, I don't have to learn that theoretical waste of time stuff. God will never forgive him. The Mayim Beis Hashem, my father says like this, you should look at it, it'll blow your mind. Yiddishkeit, based on not learning Talmud, just give you misses, be a very from Am Ha'aretz, Yahadus, built on just doing the mitzvahs without Talmudic research, without studying and thinking and analyzing Torah. That's called a religion. Every nation has a religion that's not Yiddishkeit. Talmud Torah connected Kulam. If you know, he learned it 60 times, you got to learn it again. Because Talmud Torah purifies the mind, the intellect, against the negative forces coming into you. If you can't fight off the Eitz Hurrah, you will not fight off the Eitz Hurrah, because that Eitz Hurrah is and that's an intelligence that's invading your mind every time you turn on Chas Vashon on television or even a computer or a radio filthy dirty things that you hear it became so accepted we're desensitized you know what you need for that intelligence coming in a counter intelligence that's the Torah, Dhamma Torah the theoretical discussion of Torah will clean the mind sure you do all the mitzvahs that's not that's your goal by Shita not to learn Torah just to do the mitzvahs God will never forgive such a man. 
to the mind base, they say, well, he has a sheet on not to learn Gemara and Midrashim and theoretical splitting of hair. Because he knows what to do. Shalom, I'm a good Jew. I don't cheat and lie and steal. I keep all the mitzvahs. Shechilus, Libi, Elech. I go in my own heart, Tik Tik. Shechilus, Sar. I'm the master of my future. You don't have to tell me what's right and wrong. I have common sense. I can figure it out. So my father brings an example. He says to the Gemara, if you find an Aveda, and you know it belongs to a guy, and you return it to the guy, no Yoruba Hashem slow, so God will never forgive him. When you find an Aveda, and you know it's for, for sure you know it's from a guy, maybe God wants you to receive this Aveda, maybe he's answering your prayers for Panosa, maybe. Why do you have to give it back? My father writes down, that only implies when there's a Wild West culture. But when you have a country like this, where you have a lost and found in every city, that's already Dino Mahfusa Dino, you have to give it back, otherwise you're a Russia. But if you don't have it, it's have Kairos, and you think I have to give it back because I treat a Jew like a guy, because putting giving back lost objects is a decent thing to do. That's what your mind told you. It's a decent thing to do. You're Macha, you consider Israel and a guy equal. It's not the same. You know why you return it to a Jew? Not because you have you think it's right, moral. That's Bashkimos Libya later. You give it back because the Torah said you gotta give it back. That's why. The Torah said you can't kill people, but then there's a mitzvah to kill people in a bezin. And the Torah said you have to be have rachim v'chanon on people, but it's also to have chanon on the shotim. Bishayim bodei also the rachim alav. You have to know when you're not allowed to talk lush and hard about anybody except if a guy is an apikoris and he's promoting a kfir and apikoris. Then you're mitzvah to talk lush and hard. You're not allowed to be bechal shabbos, but you have to be bechal shabbos if it's your life is at stake. So there's rules and regulation when yes and when not. You can't do it because you feel it's right. I think it's the right thing to do. You may be misled. You can't go with Shkigos Levi. You don't steal because it says here in the Sefer, Torah, you're not allowed to steal. That's why. If you decide to Hashav Zavayit to an Akum where there's a Hefkevis and no one returns anything, but you want to be a decent person, you return it to him. It says, uh, look at the Mayan. Gemara brings down there. You, you're, you're Mashved. You're equal to Goy with the Yid. And there's no mitzvah to bring it back to a Goy. However, he said, if you give it back and you tell him you're a Jew and it's my religion not to keep other people's property, not because I'm a queen to give it to a Akum, but will come out of that a Kiddush Hashem is a tremendous mitzvah. If it's Kiddush Hashem comes from it. Even you see in the Gemara, a part of a Tanu and Amora bought something from a from a from a guy and there was a diamond in there and he gave it back. He bought a donkey, there was a diamond on, on the pack, and he, and he says, Oh, you come from a great religion. Then, if it makes a Kiddush Hashem, you may to do it. <sighs> Look at the piece in the Mayan Beis HaShem. Because when a Jew does a mitzvah, his heart becomes inflamed with love of Hashem. One mitzvah leads to another mitzvah, another mitzvah, another mitzvah. That's why you're giving back that lost object to a Yisrael, Hashem Zavayna, or do a mitzvah, any mitzvah, because you come inflamed and get closer to God Yishbaruch. That's because he's a tzivoy. Not like the Reform religion said it's good deed. Not good deed. Tzivoy is a command. You must. Not up to you. You must do this, because God said so. That's why you do it. Not because your conscience or society or the mores of the tell you just the proper thing to do. <clears throat> well, nowadays there's proper things to do is to come openly and tell everybody you're gay. You know what the Torah punishes a person who practices that lifestyle? Misa. Pedophiles don't go to jail for 32 years, they get executed. Animalism, uh, homosexuality, a raping a married woman, get Misa for that. There's no relative moralism. Moral relativism, whatever they call it. Oh, we have absolutes. And goes for all Goyim, six, seven mitzvahs. We have 613. The creator of the universe and this enormous universe, he has rules for mankind. It's correct because he, the creator, said so. That's why. Not because my ma wonderful straight mind figured it out. That's no proof of anything. Because look what Hitler told the people. The Jews are vermin. You got to wipe them out. That's his opinion. Just like gypsies are worthless, Jews are worthless. They're untermenschen. You Jews are under subhuman. He decided that. And in the early days of the colonies, they decided if you laugh on Sunday, you got to go to the pillage. They throw pies and things in your face. You're not allowed to laugh on Sunday. It's a holy day. That's their opinion. And then they have all kinds of crazy things. They went after the next hundred years. They went the opposite way. Immorality and openly um, discussed. 
that system is filthy wrong. The person smiles at it and, and you pillage him on Sunday, that's wrong or two. Then they used to burn witches in America. Burn witches. Hey, that's what they decided. This is all relative. It changes every hundred years. Torah doesn't have that. Nothing changes. You have to change to keep the Torah. Torah never changes. Because it's not relative moralism. It's absolute rules from the Creator. If you don't get in that in your brain, you never graduated kindergarten. Now let's go to Vayelech. Vayelech, this year is together. Every three or four years is separate. How do you know when it's separate or together? Because the Balatorn brings down a passage from Daniel, Aleph Hay, I mean, first chapter, fifth passage, he says that uh, the Bukhat Netzer that said that this young Daniel, Navi, was a young guy, give him the finest food every day. He was in jail. But give him the finest food. Me pas bag hamela. Me pas on the bread of grain bread of the melech. Where is that passage? Yeah, where is that passing here? It says here, by Yemoyin Lohem Hamelech, he demand the king demanded for them, Daniel and his friends, every single day should get a meal, me pass from the bread, bag, bag means grain bread, Hamelech of the king. From here, Balturim says there's a hint that a Rosh Hashanah comes out on the first day, on Monday or Tuesday, then in Mesoma Yelich is separate. How do you know that? Me pass, bread, but it all means, pass is also means a piece in Gemara language. Pass, the more, uh, it means a piece, a separate piece. Bag, base Gimel. If uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is the last word, Hamelech, when the Chazan in the morning before Baruchum, he says, Melech, you know, instead of Shokinad, when we do Shabbos, Melech is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the first day is Rosh Hashanah. We say Melech, which means Yom Hadin. When Melech is Bag, Monday and Tuesday, then Mi Pas, Pas, right? And the Vayayim is separate. Mi Pas, uh, bread, but it needs a piece. Bag is bread made out of wheat. And Hamelech, which means Mi Pas, Vayayim, the second set is separate. When Bag, Monday or Tuesday is Hamel, Rosh Hashanah. Now, how do you know Bag means grain bread? Bag is not... Grain bread is bar, bar, base, reish, grain, right? Base, reish, bar. How does Gimel become reish? Well, if you know something about olive base, you know there's a couple mystical ways to learn olive base. Sometimes olive is one, base is two, Gimel is three, Gamachi, right? The olive is four. But there's another system, those who learn Gematrias and Russia Tavis. The first letter could equal 400. Tuf, at, bash, the second letter is 300. One from either, the first one from either end, at, is that Aleph is one, but it could be 400. Bash, the second one, and the second one end from the end, that's 300. Gar, Gimel, is Reish. Dalit, four, is Kuf, 100. At, bash, Gar, Dak, Dak, Dalit is Kuf, 100. Four is a hundred. Hats. Hey is ninety. So listen. Bays at bash gar gimel could be rage. Oh, gimel could be rage. Bag to rage bar. Ooh. Um, we pass a piece bar of the of wait, wheat bread, the finest bread that a king eats. Hamelech that the king would eat, which means when Hamelech, Rosh Hashanah, which is the first day of, you accept God upon you as a Melech, is on base Gimel, then Pas, then Pas is uh, by itself, by Yelich is by itself. Also, you know when you have two sedras in the Torah, the seven of them, sometimes they're doubled up, all of them, when you have two sedras in the Torah, you always read the Haftorah of the last sedra, not here. Here you read the Haftorah of the first sedra. Why? You can't read the second uh, Haftorah of the second one this Shabbos. You know why? Because the second Sedrim by Yelich has a Haftorah called Shuva Yisrael. And that's for next week. Between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Shabbos Shuva. So you can't read that. So you read, instead of reading the Haftorah of the second Sedrim, read the Haftorah of the first Sedrim. Because Shuva Yisrael you need for next week. Because that's called Shabbos Shuva. And you see that also in the word Mi Pas, Mem Pei Tov. Mem Maftir. Pei is when you write it like that, script, you turn it 90 degrees, looks like a shin. 
O Mem Shin Tov. Maftir Shabbos Chuma. The Maftir of a Yedish of Shabbos Chuma, not for this week. That's about the Balatun. Anyhow, let's go into a few things about Rosh Hashanah. You can see this on TorahAnytime.com, which you're listening to now. Uh, you go to my um, picture there, and on top you see the questions and answers on Chodesh Elul, and the question and answers of Rosh Hashanah. So the ones of Chodesh Elul you all know already. Why do you blow shofar in Elul? It's only in Rosh Hashanah, it's a mitzvah. Why do you say Slichos daily in the month of Elul? We discussed that. Why do we do Hatoras Nadorim in Elul? Why do we nullify all vows? Why do we do extra tshuva in Elul every day? Does the Svanim get up every day for a month? Slichos, we do a week before or four days before. What message is built into words Elul? Why do you say El Dovah Hashem Ori for 40 days beginning with Rosh Hashanah? Why do you go to Mikvah Erev Rosh Hashanah? Everybody. Why do we fast? Erev Rosh Hashanah half a day, man, woman, and child. Doesn't mean a two year old. You're right close to Bar Mitzvah, close to Bas Mitzvah. Why do you make a chauffeur from any, can we make a chauffeur from any kosher animal? Must the chauffeur be curved naturally? Or can it be curved by man? Can it be very, very short? Can it be very, very long? Should it have a deep sound or a high sound? Well, if you want to answer to all these questions, you go to the second page. Answers to Chodesh Elul. Look it up. You'll see it's written over there. If you have any questions, call me up. My telephone number is right written underneath there. Now let's go to Rosh Hashanah questions. It's also on, on, la, on the header there. And after this, we're going to put up Yom Kippur questions and answers. And Sukkot questions and answers. Let's go to a few questions of Rosh Hashanah. Why is the naming, the Kriyat Torah for the second day of Rosh Hashanah, the Akedo? when Avram almost slaughtered his 37-year-old son, because Avram was 137, when actually it happened on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. Why do you read it on the second day? If we wouldn't read it at all, we have no kasha. But you read it dafka on the wrong day. Why is it that we read the Akedo on the second day? With Minat Torah, there's no second day. Why do you read it on the second day? When it happened the first day, first, first day of Tishrei. That's why we blow a shofar, because Avram killed that ram, and took off the horns, and brought the ram instead of the sun, and the horn he didn't bring. And that's why we remember that Kedah by the horn that he didn't bring us offering, because it doesn't burn. And that's why we blow the horn, the shofar, on Rosh Hashanah, because that's when the Akeda happened, first day of Tishrei. You want to know the answer? Oh, there's a lot of answers. The best answer you could ever imagine is my father's answer. They decided to walk up. The first Kriya, the Kriya Torah on the first day, is about Ishmael. Should we throw him out of the house or not? Avram and Sora had a dispute. Hashem came to Avram and said, Shema Bekola, listen to her. The Mori Nebuchim said that he was lower than her in levels of Levua. There are 11 levels, and she had the 11th level, he only the 10th. Listen to her. And they threw her out, with the Hagar, with the child. Is he out or in the Jewish family? Is he a son or is he a slave? The daughter of a shivcha is a slave, right? Also, are we counted in the Sefer HaChaim? Or Chas Sholem not counted that Sefer HaChaim? Do we say three... Don't we say three times, Im Kabonim, are we, right after you blow Shofar, Im Kabonim, are we like sons? Or like Im Kabodim, are we like slaves? Are we like children or are we like slaves? It's part of Torah Shabal Peh. It is part of Torah Shabal Peh. Like Matan Torah. It's not mentioned. It is part of Torah Shabal Peh. It's like Matan Torah is not mentioned on Shavuos. Just says on Shavuos you bring Bikurim. There's no thing in the Torah that mm, Shavuos was uh, Torah was given on Shavuos. It's two. Um, um, in Kabbalim and Kabbalim, are we like children or are we like slaves? Let me explain that to you. The machlokus of um, Avram and Sarah is Avram said he's my son. Sarah said no, he's not my son. He said Evet, out of here. 
are we like sons or are we like slut of Adam? That's the message of the first day of Rosh Hashanah. After we blow the shofar three times, we say, Im kavodim, im kavodim. If we're like Avodim, well, what can we do? We look up to the boss. Whatever he says, it says. But if we're like Bonim, Rachamein, have Rachmanis, leave us in the family. We're your children. That's more important than what happened to a man 4,000 years ago that he had the courage to about to slaughter his son. That was their test. Avram and Yitzchak. What about me today, Tavshin, I and Aleph? Will I make it or not? Am I an Eved? Am I a first class citizen? Uh, a, a slave or a, a Ben, a first class citizen? Am I in or out of the book of Chaim? That's what my father brings down. Im Kabonim Kim Avodim. Am I a Ben? Or am I like an Eved? Am I like Ishmael, an Eved or a Ben? Sara Paskin. And Hashem said, Shema Bakoda, she's right, you're wrong. Out of here. So he was thrown out. We want to know, are we going to be thrown out? Or will be written in today, the first day. So they can be written in right away. Roshayim written in right away. Bain and him have ten days. Roshayim and Kippur. And uh, we want to know, the main thing is not what happened between Avram and Yitzchak 4,000 years ago. I want to know today, can I survive this year, Tavshin Ayin Aleph? Can you survive? I want to know what my fate is. That's a thousand times more important than the Akedo. Those two people passed the test, but what do with me? Ah! It's a tremendous concept. The first Kriya is about the fate of Yishmael. Is he in or out of the Jewish family? Is he a son, a Ben, or an Eved? He's a son of a Shifcha, so he must be an Eved. Also, are we counted? Are we counted in the Sefer Chaim? Or Chas Hashem not in that Sefer Chaim? Don't we say three times in the davening over there, Rosh Hashanah, in Kabbalim, Kabbalim? Is that what we're asking for? If we're bonded, we're in. Have Rahmanes, come on, okay. We're your children, give me as a chance. Avadim employees, you're fired. No, not my son. Not my house. Not me. Show many extra favor, kindness. Are we like children? Are we like slaves? That is thousand times more important than the Al Qaeda. Next question. Why doesn't the Torah mention the main theme of Rosh Hashanah, which is Yom Hadin? It's far more important than Shofar. Because you don't have a chauffeur. Still Yom Adin, you're being judged. Every man, woman, and child, Jew and Gentile, animal, or rain, or no rain, that year. So what's it? Chauffeur, very nice. If you have it, you got to blow it, but <laughs> your fate has nothing to do with that. Why don't you mention that on Rosh Hashanah? It's Yom Hadin. Okay. Yom, Yom Teruah Yilachem. Blow your chauffeur. But what about the main thing, a thousand times more important, is my fate for the next year, which is decided now, Rosh Hashanah. Am I going to make it or not? Why don't you mention that? It's part of the Torah Shemal Peh. Why? Like Matan Torah, it's not mentioned on Shavuos. It just says, Shavuos, you've been recorded. Why don't you mention the same thing? It's too chauvinistic for popular consumption. The guy is not supposed to hear that when they read the Bible. Because if it's Yom Hadin for us, and if we're high, if we take the whole thing down with us, and if we're in, innocent, the whole world comes up because of us. We're the, the, our, I'm the light of the nation. We're the captain of the ship. If we're at fault, they all suffer. It's all our fault. We don't want them to know that. We don't write it in the Bible. They don't learn Baba Vasa, Baba Siya, Baba Kama, Shavuot, Samakos, and Ebo de Zoran, and Chalik, and Sanhedrin. They don't learn all the uncatitudes. So therefore, we don't want to write that. It's too chauvinistic. Um, we're responsible for all the good, and we're responsible for all the bad. If we're high, if everybody suffers because of us, we don't want to write that. Same thing with Matan Torah. Yes, Bikurim and everything says the mind base of Sheva. Ah, Torah was given only to us on Shavuos? On Shavuos? Yeah, the Torah was given to us, but Shavuos, why don't you connect that? Nowhere in the Torah does it connect it. Because the Torah was given to us, which means we accepted everybody else, 99% of the world, is rejected. That's too much chauvinism for them to handle. So we keep it in the Torah about them. And Shemini had service too. It's not mentioned what the Gemara says about it. It's hard for me to go away from you. Send all the nations away because they must come to Yerushalayim once a year on Sukkot. Otherwise, we'll have no rain. But you, after they all go home, on Shemini Atzeres, Atzer, stay another day, the eighth day after they're all gone. It's only for you and me, Hashem says. Yisrael and Hashem. That's why you bring not all those animals you brought on the days before Shemini Atzeres. Bring one par, one bull, one sheep, one goat, one ram, one, one, one. Because Hashem is one and we're one. That's a private little party we have for one day. Koshalat Pridasim is hard for me to get separate from you. Let me give you one more day together with no help, nobody else there. Just us close friends. That's why Shemina Seris doesn't say there about why we have Shemina Seris. Just says eight day. You know? 
Or you saw Ach Shemayev, only happy. Nothing, no mezuzah, no sukkah, no hakofas, no lulav, no only simcha. That's for Yisrael and Hashem. Number three, if Rosh Hashanah is an anniversary of the uh, as anniversary of the creation of the world, why do we say Hayom Hara Solom today the world was conceived instead of Hayom Leila Solom today the world was born, which is the creation? Haras it's nine months before Leila, but but the world was made on that six days, and the last day Adam Rishon was made on a Friday, so that's when the beginning of mankind started. Why do we say Yom Haras conceived? Why don't you say birth when it actually came out? It is creation only in Hashem's mind, Kavi Rosh Hashanah, you know very well, is only God thought of it. The actual, actual physical world was on Sivan. How do you know? Because the fourth day of Sivan, God made the sun. Not the fourth day of Tishrei. But He thought about it. And to Hashem, thinking is action. Energy becomes matter in His mind. But the actual world it was made uh, in Nisan. Proof, every 28 years, we bless the sun where it was in its original position at creation. That comes out of Nisan. Not Tishrei. Which means the world was created in Nisan. Because 28 years, like last year, uh, we begged Bicha Zechamo in Nisan. When He actually made it. Fourth day of, the, of Nisan. Wednesday. Doesn't always come out Wednesday, but it comes out fourth day of Nisan. It, it, but Hashem thought it up, says the Gemara, the first ten blot in the Rosh Hashanah. After ten blot, it finally comes out that, yes, God thought about it in tissue, but actually made it in Nisan. Nisan. Thought and action to Hashem are synonymous. But Yom Hashem, Yehi, or God said there should be light. By He, or it was light, because the energy became matter. Energy became matter, which is a godly concept. Energy become matter. Matter to make energy, I can do that. I can burn this paper up and get heat. I can't take the heat and recreate the paper. Hashem is the only one that can create Yesh may I something from nothing. There's no such thing as spontaneous generation. Um, what is it called? Um, autogenesis, automatic creation. Only the beginning there was. Only that. Only the beginning. By he or by Rashi's Barley came again. But God, at the beginning, God created. Beginning of time. Yeah, beginning. Uh, Rashi's. No, not beginning of time. In the beginning of the world, what God created. The Shemayim Bars, heaven and earth. Bars why he said, Tov of was unformed and unshaped for millions of years. Then, Vayom HaShem Yehi Ar, God said, there should be light, an explosion of energy. Ah! Then came the world. So Rashi says it doesn't mean in the beginning, because Rashi said, if it meant in the beginning, it would use the proper word. Bari Shona, at the beginning of time, but it was not the beginning of time. It was beginning in time, maybe millions of years later, when God said, let it be a world. Smichas. Gracious, somewhere in the beginning, maybe 15 billion years later, uh, Shem said, Yehi-ar, let's this come into no more tohu below, but let's get a form and a shape. Because it says right away in the beginning, Baruch the Kim Rachef Amoyim, and the, the Spirit of God hovered over the water. Where does he say he made water? It was there already. Hydrogen and oxygen and all the other gases. And then the water should separate, and the land should appear. Well, how, when did he make land? Oh, Rashi's brother gave us a Shemayim as Oh, he made it all in a Tov of uh, for, who knows, millions of years. And then, at a certain poem, at Rashi's, not the beginning of time, like Hirsch says, from the beginning. We don't know when the beginning started. Sephora said uh, the first light there, he or that was not the sun, that was time. The fourth day we had um, Shemesh, the Uraeth, the sun and the moon. This is all, all my Sephora stuff. And it's, we can't go into that. So, um, uh, so God created the world in His mind in Tishrei, but He actually made it in Nisan. That's why we have Rosh Hashanah in Tishrei because it's good enough when God thought. That's good enough. Thought becomes a fact because you know when you think bad thoughts, you're going to be punished. You're, you're thinking bad thoughts. If you think apikorsis and kfira, you'll be punished. Sometimes thinking is action. And we know scientists can prove today that the way radio waves come from the mind, you can transmit thoughts. There's ways to do it. We knew that thousands of years ago. Next question. If Rosh Hashanah, the first of Tishrei, was the day of the completed world, and the sun was created on the fourth day, 
Why do you celebrate the sun's creation on the 4th of Nisan every 28 years? We just told you that. Next question. Why do you stand for the first 30 tekiyos of the, of the shofar when they're called tekiyos de miyusha? When you sit, why do you stand? Which means sitting tekiyos. Answer number five. Until Chorban Shani, until the second destruction, we used to sit down when we heard the first 30. We stand now because we are not at the level of spiritual perfection. We, and we are not sure of the eventual outcome. But those people who really had a very serious Elul, they did Shuvah completely. They knew that God had forgiven them. Therefore, they sat down at the Kiyos. They were not worried. They were not trembling. They were absolutely sure that they were going to make it. And that confused the Satan. Why are they sitting? Because to them, it's all done. It's over. You have no power. You have no power to be Makatre. They, they're a perfect nation. did Shuvah. You, you Satan, out of here. Get out of here. He's confused. That they're so secure, they're not afraid. That means the Mabalbels are Sotom. And who is that Sotom? You! Your guilty conscience, you are taking care of all your babies, you did Shuva. That's Mabalbel has Sotom. There is no more, there's no one's going to be complaining against you in the country. You sit down. That confuses the Sotom. How come they be so sure? We stand now because we're not at the level of spiritual perfection. And we are not sure of the spiritual outcome. The ancients had the power to weaken the satan. That means Bilbul Hasatan. They now we stand because we're afraid, we're in trepidation. We didn't have a real Elul. Now in the last few days you should have a real Elul. Take care of your Averis before it's too late. So they called Kiz the Miyusha. Therefore, in old Ashkenazi Kihilas, during the Kiz the Miyusha, everyone stands except the two people holding the Sefer Torah. They don't put the Sefer Torah on the beam and cover it with the towels. They sit to remind the Kehillah that there was once a minute you saw that everybody sits. That's the old minute Ashkenaz. Number six. Why isn't Yom Kippur before Rosh Hashanah? Isn't it the normal way to first repent, then, then you plead your case to the judge? Why do you do it backwards? First you hear the Pesach din, and you say, oh, I'm so sorry, let me appeal the case. Why don't you do it the right way? You don't put on clo clean clothes and new outfit, then take a shower. You do it the other way around. Ah, answer. People will make, take no action unless they are shocked into reality first. Tuscan, 50 years in jail. Execution. Oh, now you get the lawyer and they appeal the case. All right. That's the 10 days of Shuvah. Because most people, most, not everybody, has to be shocked into reality. Yom Hadin is Rosh Hashanah. Then you have 10 days of Shuvah. Mm. Let me ask, answer this uh, thing like this. You know that the first day of Rosh Hashanah, you are signed up for the Book of Life if you're a Tzadik. And the Book of Death if you're a Russian. The Bain in them, which is 99% of everybody, have 10 days of Shuvah to Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is all chesed, all loving kindness, all rachimim. Ah, oh, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippurim, atonement. So if the first day is not rachimim, it's only din, and there's not one word in uh, Rosh Hashanah davening about al chet, vidui, oshamnu, no confession, no vidui, no tshuva on Rosh Hashanah. So how can you call the Seres Meit Tshuva? One of the Seres Meit Tshuva. How? It's nine days. Or eight days now in the Chutzlois. Eight days of tshuva, not, not ten. First day is no tshuva. It's only for the next day. The, 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 the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. There's, no, there's, there's not a word of Vidoy in Rosh Hashanah, or al Chay or Oshamnu, and some people out the, leave out the first one of Lavina Malkeinu, Chatandu, they don't say the first one. So how can you call one of the ten days of tshuva, the first day, how? Answer is, the first day of the Seres Meit Shuvah Rosh Hashanah, you do a Shuvah, not for makeup, for the past evil, to accept God as your Melech. Tam lichuni aleichem. Accept me, my word, my agenda as absolute truth. That's a type of Shuvah. Abandon your false ideas that you imagine was morality and decency and right. No, no. Tam lichuni aleichem. Make me your king over you. Make me Melech Malchem and Lochem Kaddish Baruch That's the first step. Now the next nine days or eight days you can do Tshuva for your evil past. First, 
accept the truth. Then you do charot and vidu and all that stuff. Okay, Rabbi Isai, we're finished our uh, little shear for Rosh Hashanah. Maybe next week we can have an early one before Rosh Hashanah. I don't know. Rosh Hashanah is uh, Wednesday night. Maybe we'll have it on Monday night, Tuesday night. I don't know. Maybe this is the last one. But I'm going to Yom Kippur after Rosh Hashanah. A few days before Yom Kippur. I'm going to Eretz Yisrael. And I'll stay there over Sukkot. We won't see it for two or three weeks. But I'll upload with the camera some of the Shur in Eretz Yisrael. And we will be back with you. Yes, Hashem, whatever. Okay, Rabbi Isai. Kesiva uh, bechasima tova, and to Sfarad we say tizchu l'shanim rabot. Have a good bench, sweet year. Do what's right by Hashem, then He'll do good for you.